Hi, this is War Dad. This is a World War One tribute on uh, November 11th, 2018. It's a set of uh, slides of photographs taken by a World War One veteran during his time overseas. Um, these were found as negative. They'd actually been uh, thrown out as a uh, house across the street from my parents was being uh, remodeled. Apparently, the family that vacated uh, just left stuff behind or just forgotten. And the workers had uh, made a pile of boxes and books and stuff in front of their house. I went over to take a look, mainly for the books. And they were just all encyclopedias. Um, then I noticed that there were a few of these uh, sheets of plastic rectangular sheets of plastic. So getting them closer, I realized they were negatives and, uh, and then saw that, uh, in fact, some of the people in the negatives were wearing War One uniforms. Not really having the technology to do much with them, short of taking them to a photographer who might uh, make me some contact prints or something like that. These negatives were stored for about 30 years along with the rest of my military collection. <clears throat> In 2018, um, my sons helped me uh, to um, work with some of the software capable of inverting the negatives or taking them from negative to positive so that I could actually see what I had. The photos are from a uh, World War I veteran, First Lieutenant Claude B. Lane. He was with a machine gun battalion during World War II, and uh, he was born in 1896 and died in 1969. My wife did some research online and found newspaper clippings. One was related to his commissioning, shown as August 14th, 1917. And the Paris Morning News refers to Paris, Texas, not Paris, France. Here's an example of the negative. Um, this is what I had to work with. As you can see, it's a little hard to gauge what I actually had just by looking through, through these. But once uh, I had the proper software and was capable of creating a photograph, uh, they really came through quite vividly, as shown here. Here's a view of the crook troops at a Red Cross canteen. This is an interesting photograph showing the uh, advanced technology of a motorcycle in this time period. I believe that the man sitting in the sidecar may be Lieutenant Lane. Uh, there's one particular person that's seen throughout and that's the man in the sidecar here. Also basing that on what I knew of the family, both his grandchildren and his children, they were very light complected and, and uh, blonde, blue eyed. So I think uh, it's a good possibility that that's him in the sidecar. I made the notation that uh, it has 90th division markings and you can see the T and O superimposed there on the sidecar. Uh, the unit marking of the 90th Infantry Division. Here we see the troop ship, um, probably even looks like they've just boarded. Man on the uh, docks there guarding the gangplank with his 1903 Springfield. This is one of my favorite photos. Um, mounted officer, I believe it to be First Lieutenant Lane. And uh, tried to work with it some uh, due to the contrast. This one shows him fairly clearly. The next one shows uh, a contrast enhanced version and it brings out some of the other features a little more clearly, but it's just kind of a bad background to take that picture. In addition, there's kind of a scar across the negative, that uh, horizontal line that can be seen that's a a real artifact that's not a scanning artifact. I refer to this photo as the grim-faced lieutenant. 
uh, one of his contemporaries, perhaps. That's a nice crisp photograph showing the uh, officer, his insignia and his uniform. Here's another one on a troop ship. Don't know whether shipping out from the States or headed home, perhaps headed home, I don't know. These troops, uh, this is a sequence of three photos, which are groups of troops ready for parade or perhaps moving out to the front. They seem pretty well equipped. And uh, one thought is perhaps these were the men under his command. One of the things I noticed in the uh, photograph is these troops don't have the standard cartridge belts that you would issue troops that were going to be carrying the 1903 Springfield. In fact, they have 45 pouches. You can see most of them have two 45 magazine pouches for the Colt 45 pistol. Some of them you can see they have the holster. The only thing I could think is that because they were a machine gun battalion, that perhaps their personal uh, arm that they carried was restricted to the pistol. Uh, that's the only suggestion I have. Otherwise, these are excellent shots showing their equipment. The men also have a variety of styles of overseas caps. Some seem to be very high peaked and others kind of a little bit lower. And this may also be a caused by the way they've chosen to wear them. Some straight up, some cocked, some pushed forward. It's just interesting to see them uh, expressing individuality in the style in which they're wearing that cap. A nice shot of an officer with his enlisted men. You can see off on the right there is a sergeant. You can see his stripes clearly. Uh, maybe a corporal, but I think it's a sergeant. Of interest is that they're not wearing any sort of web equipment, no pistol belts or anything like that. So either they're kind of in a rest area or or essentially they're some sort of support troops that uh, their primary functions are don't require them to wear weapons and sidearms and such. Here's a nice view of a European town, maybe Belgian, maybe French. You would be looking across the Rhine in Germany or something, I guess. No telling at this point. There's no one to ask where these places are or who these men are. There's an interesting photo, uh, kind of a unique cap on this uh, young farm boy and uh, taking his livestock up. Out. Looks like he might be actually hitched to something. But anyway, obviously, uh, the photographer found it an interesting scene and snapped the photo. Here again, soldiers at sea. Uh, what's unusual about this photo is the uh, one man that seems to have like a card or a cloth or something tucked up under his cap. I don't know, maybe. Maybe they're playing a card game or something, or he just tucked it up there. It's no matter what, it's an odd photo. This is a very interesting village. It's a terraced village. It kind of creates a surreal look to it. Down at the bottom of the photo, the gates and windows and doorways are actually dug into the side of the terrace above it. And that, so there's two terraces shown the uppermost, just below the uh, lower number 53. Those houses are literally two terraces up from the lowermost uh, dwellings. Here we see troops boarding a ship. A uh, nice shot of packs, helmets, and uh, gear in general. I called this one no dining car on the string. Uh, the soldiers look like they've just gotten out to stretch their legs and apparently somebody provided them with sandwiches, they have their canteen cups out. This is another uh, good shot showing a 
variety of expressions and again the different styles of wearing their overseas cap. The man closest to the camera on the left appears to actually be wearing it sideways. Kind of a patriotic shot to the stars and stripes in front of a European looking building. Possibly maybe it was a headquarters for them or uh, just uh, someone set it up for a nice picturesque photo. Here's another favorite. Here we see uh, the fact that livestock still uh, played an important role at this time in the American Army. Three soldiers tending to an army mule. One man seems to be pumping something, whether they're giving him a washdown or some sort of uh, medical treatment. Uh, who knows? But uh, uh, it's an interesting photo nonetheless. It appears that maybe the man on the left pumping the hose almost looks like he has goggles on his cap. Not sure whether that's actual or just the way the wrinkles and the shadows fall, but it appears to, to be goggles to me. Here's a shot of a fast moving river and a small bridge. On the far side, you can see an American soldier. Whether this was a site of a skirmish or a key objective, or they just thought it was a picturesque view to, to get a shot to send back to the folks. This photo, um, just because of the way it's composed, uh, makes me believe again you know, based on what I knew of this man's descendants, that uh, perhaps this is the most clear shot of First Lieutenant Lane. Uh, very striking, he's got his swagger stick and a riding crop, and heavy overcoat, and uh, very nicely posed. Here we take a look at his later life, um, and uh, ends up making a little article out of his visit to his mom, um, just in the kind of like society page, I guess. Then a little bit later on, in 48, he loses his sister. Who was he to me? Claude B. Lane was uh, a neighbor. And uh, I remember being a kid and my folks telling me that he was a veteran of World War I. Uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, their extended family actually lived in the neighborhood. He was the, the old man, the grandfather. His son and daughter-in-law lived in a house nearby and uh, had ser several kids uh, that were basically my contemporaries and I knew. He just lived a couple of houses down my block and uh, I would see him outside sometimes and just not think anything of it. I was only around 10, 11 years old. And then one day I remember seeing an ambulance pull up and uh, some men uh, carry him out on a stretcher. And and then later my parents told me he, he passed away um, not too long after that. Um, through research, I was able to find the obituary and that's how I found out that uh, he had, it was 1969 when he passed away. This photo uh, is the uh, final resting place of First Lieutenant Claude B. Lane. Um, it's Fort Sam Cemetery in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, it's this headstone that provided me his specific uh, unit information, the 345th Machine Gun Battalion and his rank. So uh, again, uh, this was uh, research by my wife. She found it online from Find the Grave. A little word about the images themselves. Uh, this is only a small portion of the negatives. There's 60 plus negatives. Uh, I've only scanned some of them and converted even less. Um, the most interesting thing was they were mounted on glass. As you may have noticed, I chose to place them in numeric order rather than uh, doing them in what sort of uh, sequence they may have occurred in or grouping them all the men on ships or all the ones in Europe. 
the scanned image, if you zoom in on any of these, you have that ability, not the best. Uh, but this is a first pass. And most importantly, I was attempting to kind of do a survey of exactly what sort of subject matter I would have in these negatives. It's nice to see them as photographs. I intend to uh, kind of uh, keep plugging away at it. And hopefully I'll upload some more images as I uh, scan and hopefully I'll continue to, through trial and error, come up with uh, improvements on the quality. Uh, War Dad is the uh, kind of nickname uh, one of my sons came up uh, with, and uh, he also created the the image you saw in the opening shot with the little bloblet wearing a helmet. Uh, he has his own YouTube channel, goes by Cake. Um, myself, I've been collecting Militaria since 1974. Started off with. Uh, World War II, German and American items, kind of went back to World War I, 1930s, went forward into the Cold War, have quite a collection of East German and Soviet, uh, and then even things from our current wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. The uh, intent of this upload, um, and hopefully what I'll be using the channel for, is to share images and video of my military collectibles. Uh, people always say, wow, you got a nice collection, broad variety. It'd be nice if you had a, could put it in a museum. And I always say, well, I'm too broke to open a private museum. Anybody that knows anything about that knows it requires funding, establishing a foundation for fundraising, volunteers, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to say nothing of the expense of the building and all that. And, maintaining things. So for now, this is how I'll share my military collectibles. The uh, intent is to share um, as much as possible the personal stories, the personal artifacts that remind us that these people were uh, our fellow human beings that were had lives and were uh, uh, just doing the best they could under the circumstances um, that they were handed. It's my hope that this presentation will uh, create an interest in history by people who maybe find it boring. Uh, to me, the artifacts are uh, what uh, allow us to kind of reach back through time and, and touch these people. I want to say thanks to my son, uh, Cake, who um, provided technical support and uh, Sarge who proofed and advised me on this. The um, effort has really been kind of partially inspired by them and also want to thank my wife for the research she did in Find a Grave and the newspaper clippings.